You know, today is such a beautiful and wonderful day. You know, we have another opportunity to serve God, and I truly am thankful uh, for that because God is faithful. Uh, even when we're not faithful, He is faithful. And I truly thank God, you know, for His goodness and His mercy and His faithfulness to me uh, and uh, my, uh, my family. Uh, well, welcome back to the broadcast. You know, you know, we're going to have a word of prayer and get right into today's uh, Bible uh, lesson. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for, you know, uh, allowing us to uh, join together again to uh, fellowship and to expound your word. Uh, we pray that the words that are spoken uh, today uh, reach someone and inspire their heart to uh, accept Jesus Christ uh, as Lord. Uh, we thank you for being the guide and the leader and the head, Heavenly Father, uh, when it concerns these particular broadcasts, because we want to give you the glory, the honor, uh, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray in faith, amen. And again, welcome. We were talking in the last uh, couple of broadcasts, uh, it started out in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verses 1 through 3. Uh, even though we read verse one in that first uh, broadcast, uh, we're talking about faith. And uh, we, it was also mentioned that we live in a word activated system. And when we speak words, we speak those words and those words are life. We give life to those words. Um, you know, that's why it is very important when you speak something negative out of your mouth. And as a refresher, I'm going to mention this particular verse before going any further. When you speak words out of your mouth, the Bible says uh, in the book of Proverbs that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And uh, they that live by it, they that live by it should eat the fruit thereof. And, uh, you know, it was mentioned also that uh, you need to be speaking words of life and not words of death. Um, but I was going to share with you, if you speak something negative out of your mouth, it is always good to get into a practice to say, Heavenly Father, allow those words, negative words that I spoke just now to fall to the ground and be unfruitful in the name of Jesus. For I speak the words of life and I speak life over the situation uh, right now in Jesus name. And that negates when you pray that prayer in faith, uh, you know, that negates that negativity. You don't ever want any type of negative words to be hovering or stewing or stewing or out there, you know, pending, you know, because as long as it's pending, the devil is going to use those words to fight against you. And you don't want that to happen. You don't want your words to come back or to give devil, to give Satan any type of foothold or any type of leverage in your life. His main objective is to steal, to kill and destroy. So you don't want to give him any type of leverage and God, he hasn't given us as believers, the spirit of fear. We shouldn't be walking around in fear, you know, when it concerns uh, Satan and those demonic forces that are fighting against, you know, God and his children, uh, meaning us as believers. But God has given us the spirit of love peace and a sound mind. Now walk in it. He commands us and instructs us to walk in it uh, on a daily basis. And then we followed up in the, uh, uh, the additional broadcast uh, in Romans chapter uh, 10 verse 8 when it concerns uh, foundation, these foundation scriptures uh, concerning faith. And now we're going to read Mark chapter 11. And I'm going to tell you, Mark chapter 11 is a very powerful uh, portion of scripture and, you know, it's something that we can continue to grow in uh, when it concerns reading the word of God, uh, Mark chapter 11, uh, because Mark chapter 11 also gives us insight. You can be, read from verse 1 all the way to the last verse of Mark chapter 11, uh, but we're going to begin 
as we emphasize here, God emphasizes here uh, this particular book uh, throughout the many broadcasts that we've already have, um, uh, you know, uh, been through. He emphasizes Mark chapter 11, which is a very strong foundation scripture. In Mark chapter 11, verse 22 is where we're going to begin. The Bible, and this is Jesus say, uh, speaking here. The Bible says that Jesus spoke these words, and Jesus answering saith unto them, they were talking about the fig tree that Jesus went to to get some, you know, to happily to see if he will find some fruit. Uh, but the tree said something, the tree spoke, uh, and Jesus answered that tree. You know, we can't hear trees uh, speaking. You know, we can't, we can hear the leaves rustling, and you may say, man, you must be off of your rocker. You know, tree. Trees can't speak. Well, yes, trees have a language of their own that only God understands. And the Bible says here, which I believe the tree said something to Jesus. I don't know what it said, but the tree said something. And one thing about God, you don't have to speak in the languages that are known uh, in the human race on the top side of the planet. You don't have to speak in those type of languages. You know, things say things, things speak. The Bible also references, well, he could, God can even uh, cause a rock to cry out to him. <laughs> okay. So, so God is the creator of the tree. So if the tree, if the Bible says the tree said something, that fig tree said something. Okay. So don't let that, you know, rock your boat. Don't let that throw you. Uh, because, you know, Jesus answered it back. Anyway, it says that. Jesus and Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Glory to God. Verse 24, therefore, well, when you see a therefore, you need to look carefully to see what it's there for. <laughs> I'm not the originator of that. Okay. So I, I thought it will fit really good there. Um, Anyway, let's go on. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that ye receive them and you shall have them. In other words, your faith makes you whole. Word activated, word activated in faith gets results. The word of God, I'm going to repeat that. When it's activated in faith, you get God results. That's why it's important to be careful of the words that you speak because you can give life to those words or either death uh, to those words. You know, for the ones that are watching the broadcast today, you know, as it has already been mentioned, you know, these particular messages are not scripted. They are right uh, straight, hot off the press of God as he inspires my heart uh, to share with you. And that's one thing about uh, the word of God. You know, you can get into the mindset to feel as though the word is for, is for someone else. God is speaking for someone uh, to someone else. Uh, but I truly, you know, apply the word to my heart as well as it is being spoken. You know, I'm not just trying to tell you something and try to show off in front of you and, and try to share how much knowledge I have concerning the word of God, because I'm trying to impress you. I'm not trying to impress you at all. I'm not trying to impress you at all. That is not uh, the motive or the mission uh, here. I mean, I can be in a barn. I don't have to be in this, in this uh, particular of a broadcasting studio here. You know, I can be standing beside a tree outside, whether it's pine or oak, it don't matter to me. I can be standing beside a swamp or feminine. It don't matter to me. You know, just as long as the word is being preached, 
You know, you don't have to be in a particular setting like this uh, to expound the word of God. I'm not trying to impress you at all. You know, as I state, I could be standing beside a hog pen. It don't make me no difference. I'm going to preach that, preach that word. It get too loud. I try to shush him. I'm still going to preach the word of God. I raise my voice up to, 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 to preach the word of God over those hogs, no matter how loud they're squealing or squeaking. You know, a cow pasture. You know, I can just go on and on about, about that. But uh, the thing is, I want you to understand that uh, this particular ministry is, uh, is, is, is the goal is, as God inspires, is to impress your heart not in a prideful way, but I'm saying it in a different type of context to impress your heart that, you know, Jesus Christ is the only way. Jesus Christ is the truth for the ones who don't know him uh, as uh, Lord. Uh, so, you know, for, and for you to accept him as the Lord uh, of your life. And it requires faith, people. It requires faith activating uh, the word of God in faith, again, as it is strongly emphasized, you know, you get God results when you do that. When you activate the word of God in faith, you get God results. Because why? God is passionate about you winning, you know, of all the games. And now it's football season and they're out there on the gridiron. And I know what it's like to play football. And they're out there sacrificing themselves you know, on that field. Why? Because they want to win. Nobody sacrificed blood, sweat, and tears. And a lot of times, you know, injuries to lose. You don't want anybody to get injured, but it's a contact sport and people do get injured. And I do pray, you know, that no one get injured seriously this year or injured at all, you know, on that football field. And you got different teams like Clemson and Tennessee and Kentucky State and, you know, you got Mississippi, Alabama, you got all these different type of, um, uh, you know, teams that are out there on the, on the, on, on the field, the South Carolina, South Carolina State, Georgia Tech, you know, Georgia State, North Carolina, North Carolina State, it goes on and on and on. They out there sacrificing themselves, but why again, they want to win. You know, nobody likes to lose, but sometimes it does happen. And then you just have to go back and regroup. You know, got to go back and regroup, get things together and, and run those plays and run yourself raggedy running those plays. Uh, so whenever the next game comes up, you want you out there to win, to get the victory. And the Christian life is the same way, you know, but how do we, where is the playing field? You know, the, where is the field that we play on? Well, it's not like in a stadium, you know, running a football into an end zone or throwing a, a you know, a, a mini yard pass and getting a touchdown. Uh, this particular uh, uh, field that we're on is actually a battlefield. Uh, whether you know you're, you, whether you fight or not, you're still in that battlefield. And, uh, you know, God desires for you to fight through him, get the victory through him, I should say. He's in Instruct, instructed me to say, we get the victory through God. Uh, we fight in God. We get the victory through him, you know, over the flesh, the world, uh, and the devil. And the word of God is our plays. These are the plays. We have many plays in football um, practice that the coaches run. They will either sign language them in or, you know, or whatnot uh, during a game. Uh, but in practice, we always ran through many type of drills and many type of plays. And in uh, those plays where every play that the coach tells you to run is designed to get a touchdown when every one from the offensive line and the running back, the quarterback, the, the quarterback, the receivers, and you know everyone out there, tight ends and all. If everybody do their part, it is designed, every play that you run is designed to get a touchdown, to go into the end zone. It doesn't matter how far you're away from that end zone. Every, pl every play, notice I'm emphasizing this for a moment and we're going to bring it in. Every play is designed to get a touchdown when it concerns football. Well, same way with the word of God. Every word of God that you apply to your life in real life, in faith, 
is designed to get you not a touchdown, but a victory over whatever you're facing, whatever situation you're going through, no matter how traumatic it may be, no matter how traumatic and extreme it may seem, the word of God, when you apply it in faith and you apply it to that situation that seems to be a mountain in your life, when you speak to it in faith, as it has been said in reference to in the book of Mark uh, chapter 11 in the Bible, those words are designed to give you the victory when you speak the word of God and you cast that mountain into the sea in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank God for his word because his word is forever true. And, um, you know, whether you believe it or not, that's your problem. It's true. Whether we believe it or not, <laughs> glory to God. Well, uh, that concludes today's broadcast. And again, uh, we've been in our study in this particular study about faith. Don't take my word for it. Do your own studying. Okay. You know, you do your own studying. You, you develop that close relationship with God. You allow God to speak to your heart and, uh, to reveal to you what his word is, is word is saying. And, uh, you know, that's how you get, uh, in the, uh, position, uh, to continue to grow in this life. And, uh, so we thank God, you know, for his living uh, word because his word makes a difference. Well, you know, I always like to end by saying something very powerful. And again, you can say it with me until next time, everybody until next time, dear beloved until next time, dear heart or whoever you are, whatever you want to fall under, whatever category or what word you want to, you know, fall under. Remember this that Jesus is Lord.